we we'll call a meeting to order of the Virginia Gas and Oil Board hearing in Big Stone Gap on Tuesday, April 18th, 2023. I would ask everyone to please mute or turn off your cell phones. And I would like to ask the board to introduce themselves, starting with Ms. Sarah. Rita Sarah, public member. Bill Harris, public member. Donald I represent Cole. Gus Danson, public member. Willie Cochran, Virginia Energy. And on the phone, we have any members on the phone? Larry Reeves with Intervest Operating. And James Ayers with Intervest Operating. Eric Lansing, Office of the Attorney General. We have a quorum. Uh, first item on the agenda, we would uh, ask anyone that has signed up for public expression to come forward and, and speak at the time. And we don't have anyone. So we call the first item on the docket. So the board will review and approve the remote attendance resolution, and we have none. Mr. Prather is in the hospital. Uh, and we will hear the report from the first bank and trust company on our escrow account. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. I'm assuming everybody has a copy of the report this morning. This is our first quarter report for 2023. If you'll turn to page three on this report, we'll start. We had a beginning balance at the end of 2022 of $5,154,462.60. We received deposits for the quarter at $38,406.30. We earned interest of $8,783.01. Fees were taken $8,722.79. Distributions were $59,485.90, giving us an ending balance at March 31, 2023 of $5,133,000. $443.22. We have processed one treasury docket this quarter for $142.40. We've processed 10 other dockets at $59,343.50. So far this year, we've issued over 60 checks. They ranged from $0.48 cents to $28,770.70. 22 of those checks were less than $100, and two of those were less than a dollar. Now, starting on page five, this is a list of all of the outstanding checks through March 31st. And this is a long list. I apologize. It goes through page... 26, and we have a total of almost $82,000 outstanding right now. And then our check achievement for 2023 starts on page 27, and it's a long list as well. It goes through page 33. A little over $3,000 to be achieved this year if the checks are not cashed. Um, I do know that letters have been sent out to these individuals. I received a call yesterday uh, and have cleared a couple of these names off of the list already. So at least we're getting a few responses back from the letters that were sent. Page 34 starts our balance sheet, and this is only for the month of March. So this includes the beginning balance for March, any deposits that we received, money market interest, Cedars interest, fees, any distributions, any transfers to our No Debbie 9 spreadsheet, 
Um, there's no audit cost and no corrections for March. And then an ending balance for each individual account. And then page 45 starts a list of our no W-9s. These are the individuals that have been issued from the docket that have not submitted a W-9 in order to claim that money. Um, each individual person is listed with their beginning balance in interest and fees and the ending balance for each individual person. And we have a little over $40,000 sitting in the no W-9 list. On page 56, this is our annual distributions since First Bank and Trust became the escrow agent in 2010. So since 2010, we have distributed over $36 million gone out of the account. Page 57 is how the fund is invested right now as of the end of March. We have ICS money market, 4.6 million, and then we still have two CDs for $250,000 each. And then I think at the last meeting, you all approved to put that money back into CDs when they redeem. So we have a list of CD rates on the very last page of the presentation, and we can start putting those back into two CDs for you. I think one time we had a million dollars in CDs, so we'll look at investing in two more CDs for 250000 And then when the other two CDs redeem in June and September, we can go ahead and reinvest those if that's what everybody wishes. Are those 12 months or 18 months or? The two that we have left? Yes. I think those are a six month and a year, I believe. They're coming due June the 9th and September the 1st. So I'll take comments from the board. Uh, I mean, the interest rates on 12 months is it's a lot better than six months. And we're not hurting for working capital right now. So what's the pleasure? And we can look at doing, we can do more than the $500,000 if that's what the board wishes. Or if we renew those two at 12 months and do another 500 at six months. What's your thoughts? Ms. Red? That sounds good. Fine to me. <laughs> yes, it is. We're not uh, making any big withdrawals. If we need money, it's there, except to get a small penalty. But I don't think items proceed. Phil, do we expect any big items coming up? Anything? Bill, do we expect any big items to come up no. and be paid? Then I would, I would, I would entertain a motion that we extend the two that we've got when they renew, renew them for twelve, and put another five hundred in at twelve. I'll make that motion. We have a motion. We have second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Oh. Gilmer, you want to pull the board next to us? Mr. Harris? Yes. Mr. Ratliff? Yes. Mr. Jansen? Yes. Mr. Cochran? Yes. That is approved. Yes, Chairman, I have a quick question. Go ahead. This is, I know we beat the achievement, achievement letters to death. Do those letters come from um, the Department of Energy or do they come from 
the bank because, you know, we were worried about people not opening them because, oh, here's a government letter and I'm not going to open it. Had we considered having the bank send them a letter saying you have this money available? It may be late to do that now, but I'm thinking they may be more apt to open a letter from a bank than they are from, you know, state government agency. I don't know why we never thought of that earlier, and I don't know if that's an option. It would probably be an option. I've mailed the letters out this year. We did not send them certified. Okay. So that way they could be more willing to help. Them. Right. Now, I remember the certified, sometimes people are hesitant because they know it's something, quote, unquote, official. And uh, But it just dawned on me that if they got it from the bank, it might they may be more apt to open it. Even if the bank... The same letter. They I mean, even if, the letter. And I don't know who pays. I guess we pay, even if that arrangement still could exist. But it, I don't know if the bank would approve of that. But I mean, we could use their envelopes and everything else would be ours. I, I, the bank would probably have to approve that, I guess. But to me, that would be the, oh, here's something from the bank, and they may be more apt to open it than from us. <laughs> I have sent them certified, but the last couple of years we decided not to. So yes. we've just been sending them um, regular mail. Mm -hmm. it, it may be too late to, to since this. Well, what, you know, if you'd like to ask Jody if that's something they could do, or I've always sent them. How many are there? Sarah, you just, you just sent them, right? I did. Within the last few weeks? Okay. Yes. Um, yes. Do we want to, say, wait two months, 60 days or something, and then resend the same letter from the bank? Is, is that, See where we've gotten in two months, maybe? I, I just thought that might be good because they may be more apt. I didn't know if there would be any conflict with the bank. I mean, since it's their um, envelope. I don't see any conflict with the bank. It's got my information on it to contact me um, to have the checks reissued. So I don't see any conflict with the bank side of it. Is that something we might they give you a baseline to who, how many checks are actually getting? any attention that way between the first mail and the second mail, and then we can decide going forward whether one's better than the other. Yeah, that might be something we could look into if you want to put okay. that of a motion. To well, wait, wait 60 uh, when, days and then. Okay, well, I'll, I'll make a motion that after 60 days we reissue check notifications um, using a bank envelope instead of the Department of Energy uh, envelope. If, that's good. If that covers it. Permitted. We have a motion. We have a second. Second. Any discussion? Ms. Gilmer, will you pull the board? Hold the board. Ms. Surratt? Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. Mr. Ratliff? Yes. Mr. Jansen? Yes. Mr. Cochran? Yes. That motion is approved. Anything else? If not, we'll call. Sarah, we'll you call. and I can follow up. Okay. okay. Jody, thank you so much. We appreciate all you do. Any other questions? I think we're good. Okay. We will okay. talk again in a few more months then. Okay. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Item number four on the docket is a petition from Intervention Office of LLC for pooling unit BC60001, number B23-0321-4254. This item was continued from the March meeting. All those interested in the party to present, please come forward. Tim Scott, Larry Reeves, and James Ayers for Intervest Operating LLC. Uh, you Need to swear in. Mr. Reeves and Mr. Ayers, do you swear and affirm that your testimony is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. You may proceed, Mr. Scott. I think they were going to answer. 
<laughs> I'd be scared. <laughs> they can see you on camera as far as it's right. Mr. Reeves, please state your name. I have your employee, your job description. Uh, Larry Reeves, I'm employed by Intervest operating as landman. And you participate in the preparation of this application pending before the board, is that correct? Yes, sir. And where is this unit located? Um, Nora COVID methane field. And uh, how many acres does this unit contain? Uh, 58.77. Um, as far as the, the ownership of the unit and that part of the unit's under lease, Intervest does have a significant portion under lease presently, is that right? Yes. And some of the, that acreage is owned by, in, in fee by Intervest, is that also correct? That is correct. Are there any party respondents who are going to dismiss from this application today? No. And for the parties that we we know listed on Exhibit B3, how are they notified of this hearing? Uh, by certified mail with the return receipt. And we provided proof of our commitment to the report. Is that correct? Yes, we did. And we also have unknown, unlocatable parties responded. Is that also correct? Yes. And how were those individuals notified? Um, by publication in the newspaper, I believe the Dickinson Star. And uh, we provided publication to the board for that for that notice. Yes, we have. Is there an escrow requirement uh, for this unit? No, sir. And Intervest is authorized to conduct business in the Commonwealth. Is that correct? Yes. And there's a blanket bond on file with the department? Yes, there is. And if you were able to reach an agreement with the parties listed on Exhibit B3, um, what lease terms would you offer uh, for a lease uh, for acreage in this unit? Uh, $5 per acre per year for a, a five year paid up lease. Okay. Is this considered to be reasonable compensation for a lease in this area? Yes, sir. What percentage of the uh, the unit does Intervest presently have under lease? Um, 60.0872222%. And again, that does include acreage that uh, Intervest owns in fee. Is that correct? Yes, it does. What percentage of the, of the unit are you seeking to pool today? Uh, thirty nine point nine two one seven 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 eight percent. And uh, you're requesting the board to pool the interest of these parties. Is that correct? <coughs> yes, it is. And that Intervest be named the operator for this unit. Is that also correct? Yes. And if the board grants application today, what address should be used for making any elections by in the order uh, entered by the board? Uh, Intervest Operating LLC, 408 West Main Street, Abingdon, Virginia, 24210. Attention, Kevin Miller, Vice President Land. And that would be the address for all communications regarding this order. Is that also correct? Yes, sir. That's all I have for Mr. Reeves. Oh, any question? Mr. Chairman, I have a question. The list. B3 starts with several unknown and unlocatable folks. Uh, are we going to have an escrow account? No, sir. That those funds will be uh, sent directly to the to the Treasury Department. The, the only time we have an escrow account is if we have conflicting owners. Okay. Yes. And I'm going to go ahead and bring this up. Gus and I talked about this earlier. I think from this point going forward, at the board's pleasure. I think that ought to be a part of our application if we have unknowns that payment be made directly to the department and that the order also could contain that same language and that way it doesn't come it's not confusing any longer about where this money's going to actually go and the and it's a directive to the operator to make sure it complies with sending those royalty payments to uh, the treasury department yeah i think this has come up before and that probably would be good to to I mean, we always do it, but I just think it would be, you know, if it would be. Uh, it, it follows the letter of the directive that was sent out in 2020 
for that relief that should be requested in the in the applications. And I've talked to uh, Mr. Lansing about this also. I don't know if he has anything else that he wants to weigh in on this too at this point. Yeah, I've been looking into this. I haven't uh, resolved a lot of the questions that have come up uh, in my own mind, but uh, I'm fine with the suggestion that's just been made to put that in the petition. Okay, thank I certainly you. don't see any harm coming out of that. Thank you. Thank you. Does anything, anything else for Mr. Reed? And the exhibit. Pardon? Anything else for Mr. Reed? No, yes, sir. You may proceed, Mr. Scott. Mr. Harris, would you please state your name behind your with your job description? Yes, uh, James Ayers, Intervention and Landmass. And are you familiar with the uh, this application? Yes. And you've got prepare the application, is that correct? Yes. All right. So there's a lag there. Um, are you familiar with the proposed death of this well? And what would that be? Yes, it's uh, 2,450 feet. And what are the estimated reserves for this unit? 830. MMCF. And uh, are you familiar with the well cost as well? Yes. What's the estimated dry hole cost for this well? Dry hole cost is $233,802. And the estimated completed well cost? Completed is $669,189. And if the board grants our application today, would you agree that it would prevent waste, promote conservation, and protect world rights? Yes. That's all I have for Mr. Ayers. But just one other question is uh, the application for permit been submitted and approved at this point in time? This well? The application has been submitted. Um, I'm unsure if, if the permit has been issued at this time, but I, I believe it has. I'm unsure on that right now, though, Mr. Jansen. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Do you have any? That's all I have for Mr. Ayers. Board acts on the motion. I'll move for approval of the petition. We have a second. Second. Any discussion? Let's go over you poll board, please. Correct. Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. Mr. Ratliff? Oh, Mr. Jensen? Yes. Mr. Cochran? Yes. I have approval for that petition, Mr. Scott. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, next, we'll call uh, item number five on the docket a petition request operating LLC for pooling unit BC 536204, docket number BGOB 23 0321 All parties interested, please come forward. Again, Tim Scott, Larry Reeves, and James Harris for Intervest Operating LLC. You may proceed, Mr. Scott. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Reeves, again, your name, I mean, your job description. Uh, Larry Reeves, <coughs> employed by Intervest Operating as landman. And you're familiar with this application, is that correct? Yes, sir. And the unit is, is it located in the Moore Colbeck gas field? Is that correct? That is correct. And how many uh, acres does this unit contain? Uh, 58.80 acres. Are there um, any parties responding that we're going to uh, dismiss from this application today? No. And I believe that all the parties listed on exhibit B3 are unknown or unlocatable. Is that correct? Yes. And how was notice affected uh, for these parties? Um, the publication in the newspaper, um, the daily, uh, the Duff, um, excuse me, the Duffield Daily Telegraph. 
Bluefield? You're, you're too yep. far south. <laughs> have you provided proof of publication to the board? Yes, we have. And is there an escrow requirement for this unit? This one? No, there, no, there's not. Okay. And again, Intervest is authorized to transact business in the Commonwealth. Is that correct? Yes, it is. And there's a blanket bond on file? Yes. And if you were to reach an agreement with those parties listed on Exhibit B3, what terms would you offer for a lease? Uh, $5 per acre per year for a five-year paid-up lease. And you consider this to be a reasonable compensation for a lease in this area? Yes, sir. And what percentage of the uh, unit does Intervest presently have under lease? 93.034. Uh, Four two eight five seven one percent, and this does include uh, acreage that Intervest owns a fee simple interest in the minerals. Is that correct? Yes, it does. Um, I'm going to digress for just a minute. I want to make sure that the board is aware that uh, Intervest, you all have continuing, um, ongoing uh, searches for the individual listed on Exhibit B three. Is that correct? Yes, we have. So that's an ongoing process. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, what percentage of the of the unit is Intervest seeking to pool today? Uh, six point nine six five seven one four two nine percent. And um, you're asking the board to pool the lease parties. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And then Intervest may be named the operator for this unit. Is that also correct? Yes, that's correct. And again, if the um, Board grants our application today and an order is entered. What would be the address used for any parties making an election under the order entered by the board? Uh, Intervest Operating LLC, 408 West Main Street, Abingdon, Virginia, 24210. Attention, Kevin Miller, Vice President Land. Okay. Would this be the address for all communications regarding this order? Yes, sir. That's all I have, uh, Mr. Reeves. Any questions from the board? If not, hearing none, you may proceed. Mr. Ayers, again, your name, by whom you're employed, your job description. James Ayers, Intervest Operating LLC and Landman. And you are familiar with this application, is that correct? Yes. And are you familiar with the proposed depth of this well? I am. It's uh, 3,309 feet. And what are the estimated reserves of this unit? Um, 850 MMCF. And are you also familiar with the uh, uh, well cost of this proposed well? Yes. And what's the estimated dry hole cost? Dry hole is $242,839. And the estimated completed well cost? Uh, $722,063. And in your opinion, if the board grants our application, would it prevent ways to promote conservation that protect relative rights? Yes. That's all I have for Mr. Ayers. Any questions from the board? Do you have anything else, Mr. Scott? That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Board acts on a motion. Motion to approve. Have a motion on the second. Second. Let's give one where you pull the board, please. Mr. Rapp? Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. Mr. Ratlin? I'm Mr. Jansen? Yes. Mr. Cochran? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, the next item on the agenda is uh, item number six on the docket petition from Interest Operating LLC pooling unit BCI 600011. Docket number BGOB 23-0418-4260. All parties interested, please come forward. Tim Scott, uh, Larry, Gus Jansen. I'm used to doing that, Gus. Uh -huh. Tim Scott, Larry Reeves, and James Harris for Interbest Operating LLC. You may proceed, Mr. Scott. Thank you. Mr. Reeves, your name by him, you're employing your job description, please. Uh, Larry Reeves, employed by Interbest Operating as a landman. And you're familiar with this application, is that correct? Yes, sir. And is this unit located in the North Colbeck gas field? Yes. 
How many acres does it contain? Uh, 58.80 acres. And are there any parties responding we're going to dismiss today? No, sir. And again, I believe in this particular uh, application, the parties responded are all unknown or unlocatable. Is that right? Yeah. And in, as a result, how was notice of this hearing affected to these parties? Um, also about publication in the Duffield Daily Telegraph. Okay. Bluefield. Bluefield. Oh, yes, Bluefield. Okay, thank you. Excuse me. Have we provided proof of publication to the board? Yes, we have. And is there an escrow requirement for this particular unit? No. And Intervest is authorized to transact business in the Commonwealth District. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And we do have a blanket bond on file. Is that right? Yes, we do. And if um, you were to reach an agreement with the parties listed on Exhibit B3, what would be the lease terms you would offer for a lease and just for the sheep? Uh, five dollars per acre per year for a five year paid up lease. Again, would you consider this to be reasonable compensation for a lease in this area? Yes, sir. And uh, what percentage of the unit does the Intervest presently have under lease? 93.034 And what percentage of the unit are you seeking to pool today? 6.96571429%. Okay. And you're requesting the board to pool these unleased parties, is that right? Yes, that's right. And again, we are uh, continuing our efforts to locate these parties that are unknown or unlocatable, is that right? Yes, we are. Okay. And are you requesting Intervest be named an operator for this unit? Yes. And if the board grants our application today, what would be the address used for making any, ele any elections under an order entered by the board? Um, Intervest Operating LLC, 408 West Main Street, Abingdon, Virginia, 24210. Attention, Kevin Miller, Vice President Land. And that would be the... Um, Address for all order, all correspondence regarding this order. Is that right? Yes, it would. That's all I have to answer, Reeves. Any questions from the board? Yeah, one question. Uh, Mr. Reeves, the um, compensation you stated there was $5 an acre per year for five years. Did that also include a one eighth royalty? I don't think you mentioned the one eighth royalty. Is that part of that compensation? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, thank you. I'll clarify that at this point on. Thank you, sir. Any other questions? Anything further, Mr. Scott? I'll have from Mr. Reeves. Uh, ready for Mr. Ayers? Yes. Mr. Ayers, your name, by whom you're employed, your job description again, please. James Ayers, Intervest Operating LLC and Landman. And or did you participate in the preparation of this application? Yes. Are you familiar with the proposed uh, depth of this well? Yes, it's uh, 3,300 feet. And what are the estimated reserves for this unit? 850 mmcf. And are you also familiar with the proposed well cost? Yes. And what is the estimated dry hole cost for this well? Dry hole cost is $243,810. And the estimated completed well cost? Uh, $725,625. And again, if the board grants our application today, is it your opinion that it would prevent waste, promote conservation, protect road rights? Yes. That's all I have for Mr. Ayers. Any questions from the board? Anything further, Mr. Scott? That's all I have for Mr. Ayers. Board acts on a motion. Motion to approve. Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion? Skillman, will you call the board, please? Yes. Mr. Hayes. Yes. Mr. Ratliff. I'm staying. Mr. Jameson. Yes. Mr. Cox. Yes. You have approval, Mr. Scott. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.
The next item on the agenda is item number seven, a petition for Intervest Operating LLC for pooling unit number VC504365, docket number VGOB 23-0418-4261. All parties interested, please come forward. Tim Scott, Larry Reeves, and James Ayers from Intervest Operating LLC. You may proceed, Mr. Scott. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Reeves, one more time, your name, by whom you're employed, your job description, please. Uh, Larry Reeves, employed by Intervest Operating as a landman. And are you familiar with this application? Yes, sir. And um, is this unit also located in the north of a gas field? Yes, it is. How many acres does it contain? Uh, 58.80 acres. Are there any parties responded that we're going to uh, dismiss from this application today? No, there aren't. And again, I believe we have only unknowns and unlocatables. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And as a result, how is notice of this hearing effective for those parties? Publication in the Bluefield Daily Telegraph. Yes, sir. Have you provided group publication to the board? Yes, we have. And is there an escrow requirement for this particular unit? No, there is not. Again, Intervest is authorized to transact business in the Commonwealth. Is that right? Yes, sir. And there is a blanket bond on file with the department. Is that also Very correct? Good. And what Very terms good. would you offer for uh, a lease in this area? Uh, $5 per acre per year for a five year paid up lease at one eighth royalty. Thank you. And this, do you consider that to be reasonable compensation for a lease in this area? Yes, sir. What uh, percentage of the unit does Intervest presently have under lease? 94.29571429%. And um, what percentage of the unit are you seeking to pool today? 5.70428571%. And you're asking the board to pool these unleased parties, is that correct? Yes, sir. And are you also requesting that Intervest be named the operator for this unit? We are. And should the board grant our application today, what would be the address used by any party's respondent making an election under an order entered by the board? Um, Intervest Operating LLC, 408 West Main Street, Abingdon, Virginia, 24210. Attention, Kevin Miller, Vice President Land. That would be the address for um, any correspondence regarding an order entered by the board. Is that right? Yes, sir. Thank you. That's all I have for Mr. Reeves. Any questions for Mr. Reeves? Very none. You may proceed, Mr. Scott. Mr. Ayers, again, your name, by whom you're employed, your job description. James Ayers, Intervest Operating LLC and Landman. <clears throat> and you're familiar with this application, is that correct? Yes. And are you familiar with the proposed depth of this well? Yes, uh, 3,200 feet. And also, what are the estimated reserves for this unit? 850 MMCF. Are you also familiar with the uh, proposed well cost? Yes. What's the estimated draw hole cost for this unit? Uh, $303,464. And the estimated completed well cost? Um, 812702 dollars. Again, if the uh, board grants our application today, in your opinion, would it prevent waste, promote conservation, and protect well water plants? Yes. That's all I have for Mr. Ayers. Any questions from the board? Hearing none. You have anything further, Mr. Scott? That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Board operates on a motion. Uh, motion for approval, Mr. Chairman. We have a motion. We have a second. Second. Any discussion? Ms. Gilmer, will you hold the board, please? Mrs. Strand? Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. Mr. Radler? I'm staying. Mr. Jensen? Yes. And Mr. Cochran? Yes. You have approval for that petition, Mr. Scott. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. 
Next, uh, the board will receive an update from the board and division on activities from the staff. I skip some. No. We, don't, we don't have anything. The only thing is that we have two docket items submitted for next month. We just need you all to direct this on whether you want to have a meeting. It's May. Did either of the uh, applicants express a desire that they needed to have the hearing that month? Please. Is is who who are the applicants for next month? You rock energy and Pocahontas gas. So they weren't here today to find out. So and the deadline's passed. That's the only two we would have. Mm -hmm. What's the board's pleasure? Well, there's a chance I'm going to be out of town, so I would probably have to zoom in or whatever the mechanism we're using. Mm -hmm. Not that that should matter. Ms. Red, will you be in town? Uh, I should be, yeah. Really? I, uh, I feel compelled to have a meeting. Um, if we have applications and they've gone through the proper process, I don't want to be the one that holds up any projects. It's short and sweet, but uh, unless there's some controversy, but I'll come and do it. I would. Thank you, Mr. Scott. <laughs> I would be inclined to go ahead and schedule the meeting. Okay, thank you. Uh, the board will re will review the March minutes, which was on your on your docket. Uh, any corrections for the March meeting? You're lucky to have electricity because the schools are out. Elementary schools doesn't mm. have power this morning. Oh. Mm. That's that uh, windmill. It's not cranking. <laughs> We have a motion on the minutes. Motion to approve. We have a motion. We have a second. Second. Skillmore, any discussion? Skillmore, you call the board. Mrs. Surratt? Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. Mr. Ratliff? Yes. Mr. Jensen? Yes. Mr. Cochran? Yes. The minutes are approved. Anything for the good of the order? Any comments? Not. We declare the meeting adjourned in 45. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.